Time to ride my bike. Oh. 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 Ah. Hello everyone. Another day, another victory for the OG. Today we will learn how to make a very simple FOV changer for Counter Strike 2. With this beautiful Imgui FOV changer, you can dynamically set the FOV based on your preference. But since we are external, it takes a bit much CPU power. It's still a cool project nonetheless. Subscribe, like or write a comment. I would love to hear the next feature you want me to cover. You can also find the Discord server in the description. But remember, comply with the terms of service for the game you're coding hacks on. Many games permit it and it's essential to respect their guidelines. All Sweat C Sharp tutorials are designed with multiplayer disabled and this tutorial will precisely demonstrate how to achieve that. Now enjoy this tutorial. Welcome to today's showcase. So we will make a FOV changer today and this is the final code. So it, it's just two classes, one for the window for our FOV changer and one for the internal logic. We will loop and just write the desired fob into the game or FOV. So let's take a look at it. So before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter Strike 2. We will right click on the properties. We will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, we can get banned otherwise. Inside the main menu, you can check that this is enabled by going into matchmaking checking a map and this window will come up saying that you have launched the game in dash insecure. Otherwise do not run any applications that could get you banned. Here you can now instead go into practice and play with bots like this. All right, so instead of a practice game on the map Italy, we will want to try out our FOV changer. So here we have our usual FOV. We can't see very much. It's capped to 60 or whatever, but let's try using our FOV changer. We run it and we should get a console window and then an FOV changer window. So you can see now that it already changed, but we can set it to something higher that looks better. 120, 110, whatever your preference is, you can set it to it. And even set it to something really high. See, you might like 120. I don't know, and uh, it's not for me to judge either. So. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. And I'll see you in a bit. Like always, we will create a new C-Sharp project, a console app with the .NET 8 framework. After that, we will set the project to run in the 64-bit architecture. Then, once the project is set to the correct architecture, we will install the Sweat64 memory library. Then we will install the clickable transparent overlay. I will install the version 9.1 
you can do the same if you want to be on the safe side because I had some issues with the version 9.2. So the first thing we will do is to wipe this template code and then create a new class for our renderer. This class will be public and we will add using clickable transparent overlay and imgui net. Then we will add to the renderer class the overlay in heritage. This will allow us to use the imgui and uh, the render function and all of that. But we will have to implement the protected override of the render method for that to work. After that, we will create a new variable for the FOV. So we can set this as the default value and this value will change as we use the slider. Inside of the render function, we will add imgui.begin with our menu title. We will set it to fob changer. Then we will create a new slider with imgui.slider int and with the title FOV reference to our value variable our minimum value and our maximum value. The first thing we will need to do inside of the logic file is to initialize the sweat library. So we will be adding using sweat64, then create a new instance of the sweat class with CS2 as our process. We will get the client module with sweat.getModuleBase and client.dll. Then we will create a new instance of our renderer so that we can see our menu. We will start the renderer with the wait method added. Next up will be to get some offsets. So we will go into the A2X dumper. Credit goes to him for this beautiful CS2 interface dump. And uh, we will go into the offsets.cs and get the local player pawn offset. Then the rest of the offsets will be in the client.dll. Here we can find the camera services, the iPhone, and then the B is scoped. These are all, all the offsets that we need for this simple FOV changer. So let's create the FOV changer loop. We will set it to while true so it always runs. Then we will cast the desired fob into a uint variable. So we will get the renderers.fov, which is the menus fov, the slider. Then get the address of our local player pawn, so our character. We will do that by using sweat.read pointer with the client and the dv player pawn offset. Then once we have the local player pawn address, we can use it to get the camera services by reading a pointer with the local player pawn and then the offset m underscore p camera services. Then to finally get to the current FOV, we will use sweat.read uint and then the camera services plus the iPhone offset. But because we don't want to set our view model when we're scoped, we will read our b scoped variable, which we can use the sweat.read boolean with our local player pawn and the offset b is scoped. Once we have all of the values, we can finally create an if statement checking these things and finally write the new fov. So we will check that we aren't scoped by using the exclamation mark and check that the current FOV is not equal to the desired fob or FOV. So if it's not the FOV, we will set it then to our desired FOV. Now finally, we don't have a thread.sleep statement like we usually do, but if you do want to let the CPU rest a bit, you can do that. But this will probably make the FOV change your lag, so it will sort of rubber band. You can test out these values, you might like it more with a threaded sleep statement, or you might like it less. You can choose whatever you want. Now let's try it in game. So before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam 
under the game Counter-Strike 2, we will right click on the properties, we will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, you can get banned otherwise. Okay, so inside of a private practice game, in CS2 with dash and secure in the launch option we will test our final results so we just click on play and here we have our FOV window like in the showcase and we can set it to whatever we want 120 and we have our beautiful FOV So it's a little bit buggy, you can see the view model sometimes when you scope. But otherwise it's pretty good.